of Syria was a great man and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, valor sorry, but a leper. But he was a leper. But he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would, he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying thus, said the girl who is from the line of Israel. Amen? Amen. The Bible talking about a man called Naaman. This man was a man of great value. This man has power. He was the one that God used to beat Israel. Amen? He was loved by everybody because everybody was seeing him as a great man. But this man had a problem. He was a leper. Amen? There are many men in the world, either down in the church. People seem to be happy. But in reality, they are not happy. They are things that they hide. They are suffering in their heart. So God is looking for people who can direct them and help them. Like this young girl. Do you know sometimes why God will let, let you into problems? Because you know that if you are into bondage, you will pray. Sometimes Christian needs to be left into bondage because they will pray a lot. It's when you suffer that you pray a lot because this is where you see the glory of God. It's when the disciples were persecuted that they obeyed Jesus. Jesus Christ said you will be witness in Jerusalem, Samaria, and all around the world. So when they started the ministry, they stick on Jerusalem only. So God said, I will help them to go around the world. So, persecution started. They started to be killed. Then they ran away to accomplish the prophecy of Jesus. Amen. This is why we receive Jesus Christ today is through persecution. So I love when persecution comes sometime in a nation. Or when persecution comes against Christians. Because it's there, they're going to pray. Hallelujah. This is there, they're going to cry out to God. Oh God, we need you. God, we need revival. You will see the church, we talk only about revival only when they are persecuted. When the church is okay, they are talking about blessing. God is going to bless you. God, especially in, in America, they like, the, the like motivation speaking. <laughs> God is going to bless you. And then you see the man who played piano, piano behind. Bang. God is going to do that for you. Bang. I said, what is it? Is it a concert or they are preaching? God is going to touch your heart today. <laughs> At the end of the day, people just shout in the left and go back home. And they leave it to sin. They leave it to bondage. They didn't learn anything. They learned, the only thing that they learned come and give. Uh -huh. Give offering and you will be married. You will be prosperous. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, it's not. I'm not against prosperity. Prosperity is really good because we need money to go in Africa, go in Haiti to evangelize. Leaflet is not free. This place has to be paid. It's not, you're not going to speak in tongue in the bank. To have money. The bank will ask you, please, when you finish speaking to Tom, give me my money, man. <laughs> we need money. That is not the center of our preaching. That's right. That's right. When the disciples started, they started by talking about Jesus Christ who died on the cross for their sin. It's the same, come and repent. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's for repentance. That revival comes, blessing comes, deliverance comes, healing comes. It's not by God is going to bless you. Yeah. So people are in the church, they suffer, they live into bondage because the church has 
you. But power comes through prayer. If you want to receive the power, if you want to heal the sick, if you want to cast that demon, it's through power, prayer, and fasting. So the church has to come back into prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. For the world to see miracles, the power of God for them to come. Without power, we cannot bring people to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if I'm dying at hospital, you come and say, God is going to bless you again. <laughs> I'm not going to be healed. By the God is going to bless you. <laughs> yes. I'm telling the truth. Me, I'm not scared though. If you want to stun me, you stun me, yo. But I have to tell you the truth. <laughs> Amen. Bishop Aaron is looking for the church to come and pray on Friday. The church is not there. You are at home because you are safe there. So Trump is gonna come and persecute you. So you come to church. I love Trump. Whether you like it or no, me, I don't care. Oh. Because it's there to put things in order. If you want, don't invite me again here. Oh. But I have to say what I have to say. I'm not preaching to please you. God choose anyone he wants, whether you like it or no. <laughs> so when the church begins to live in sin, you will put someone who is going to shake you up. Oh my God. He will tell you the truth. Because people love, people will lie then. We love you. You are good. Go into homosexuality, it's good. Do abortion, it's good. Walk naked in the street, it's good. You know, you are free. We live in the world, freedom. It's good. So they like this kind of president who's going to say, go and abort, and the government is going to pay. You are free to kill a child. Yeah, that's woman freedom. And you see women are happy. People, people tell them, go and kill a child. Into nine months, go and do abortion. So when you let me clean them, I say, me, I'm, I'm a one woman. They have the right to kill children into nine. And you see Christian and, and Facebook who were happy. I will go here and recruit them. Because you are black, you think that she's going to do things for you. We live in the government. Our government is not America. Is the government of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this government, there's no black, there's no white. That's right. Hallelujah. There is children of God. Amen. So I'm not going to vote for you, whether you are a woman or you are black. If he's asked me to kill children, I will not vote for you. I'm not voting for you for your skin. I'm voting for what you stand for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So God wants people to stand. So this Naaman has his, all this authority, all, all this power, but he was a leper. He needed Elisha, like you and me. He needs us. People out there need us. We have power. That's why Christians shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't walk like that. Even you don't have anything. This young girl didn't have anything. She was taken into captivity. But she was the one who saved this mighty man. Because she talked about the prophets. In the Old Testament, the power of God was represented by the prophets. Because they were the one who has this power. In the New Testament, <coughs> the power of God come upon everyone who received Jesus. <coughs> So you are this young girl, you are this Elisha, who God wants to send out there to talk about Jesus. God wants to use you to heal the sick. Don't play with demons. Cast them out. We want power to come back. Power. Hallelujah. We want the power of God in the church again. Amen. We want it. Because the devil just come in the church and they saw our lives. And with their sleeping, there is no time for sleep. I went in Belgium two weeks ago to preach and the pastor once said to me, 
She said to God, I'm tired of waking up every time at 2 a.m. to pray because I'm working the next day. I want to sleep. God said, okay. So when she go in her room, she cannot sleep. She doesn't wake until the morning. When she goes to work, she's sleeping there. And people ask her. She said, I don't know. I don't have any problem. I can't sleep. She didn't know that God was the one who was holding her because of your job. You don't want to pray. So God, one day, she, she started to complain. And God said, because you prefer your job than my work, you won't sleep. Wow. Ooh. So she repents. She said, God, I repent. I will pray. I will still wake up. Even though I'm tired, I will still wake up at midnight to pray until 2 a.m. Because she used to do that. Now God blessed her with a job. She said, me, why am I going to wake up to pray for the people of the church? I have my job is enough. So God said, okay. So when she repented, she started to pray until 2 a.m. She was good at work. She, she didn't feel tired at all. God said, well done, you came back. So sometimes you will pray fast to receive blessing and God will not give you. Because you are not asking it for God. You are asking only for yourself. Whereas people that run are suffering and dying. When you pray, do you pray for your neighbor who suffer? Do you pray for a member of church who goes through sufferings? Or you pray only for you? We become so selfish. That's why there is no more miracle. 